taking it through to today, if these policies are changing, um, especially around aid after the earthquake. Um, just a few days ago, we had on Isabel McDonald and Isabeau um, Doucette, who are two uh, women who are writing for The Nation magazine, about what's happening in Haiti today. And I wanted to ask you about their investigative report that takes a critical look at the Clinton Foundation's first recovery commission project in post-earthquake Haiti, the construction of shelters in the city of Leogan. The report reveals the shelters turned out to be a series of trailers beset with problems, including mold, shoddy construction, in one case, worrying levels of formaldehyde. The trailers are also built by the same company, Clayton Homes, that's currently being sued in the U.S. for providing formaldehyde lace trailers for residents displaced after Hurricane Katrina. This is Isabel McDonald, one of the authors of the report on Democracy Now! We've been requesting documentation of any bidding process from the Clinton Foundation, and we have not gotten documentation. We know that they were built by Clayton Homes, which is currently being sued in the United States for, ex for um, exposing Hurricane Katrina survivors to injurious levels of formaldehyde, um, which these the plaintiffs in this FEMA formaldehyde lawsuit claim um, came as a direct result of them residing in trailers that Clayton Homes had sold to FEMA. Clinton, Clayton, um, the Clinton Foundation has not answered our questions about any due diligence that was done. We know that trailers are considered a liability in the United States. In the case of a hurricane, FEMA tells Americans to evacuate trailers. And so the real question is, how did Bill Clinton think that this would be acceptable in Haiti to provide these trailers as hurricane shelters, to buy them from a company facing this kind of lawsuit over formaldehyde? And what does it say about the reconstruction efforts in Haiti if the very first project approved by the commission that's supposed to ensure accountability and transparency in Haiti's rebuilding passes this kind of project, and Bill Clinton himself has his hands all over it, and he is the co-chair of this commission that is supposed to ensure that Haiti is built back better. Isabel McDonald of The Nation magazine, Dr. Paul Former. Well, I would make a couple of, of points. Uh, first of all, um, I don't know that that's the first project uh, approved by the commission. And, One of the first, I see. And or even that. I mean, I, I'll tell you about my own experience first in looking at shelters. Um, uh, in Leogan, and I haven't seen these ones. Um, and, and, but what, when I went there, actually with President Clinton a couple times, um, I was just stunned at how uh, flimsy the temp temporary shelters were. I wrote about this, not in a, I hope, in a mean way in that in the book that you you've read. Um, just to say, this is it. This is what the shelter experts uh, have uh, can give us. They were um, first of all, I, I uh, speaking the language. Hey, here's something very different from what President Clinton hears, uh, which he is mediated through translator. Once in a while, I end up being his translator, which I find kind of stressful. But usually, if I'm lucky, I can just hang back and listen to what people are saying, and then distill that later on uh, and and share it. So I went on this uh, trip and was looking at the uh, the shelters, and there was a woman who was kind of on dis on display as uh, here is someone who's benefited from our shelter. It had nothing to do with the Clinton Foundation, or uh, we were visiting a a formally approved. And when I say formally approved, I mean by so-called shelter experts. And what it was was a bunch of two by fours um, with white plastic sheeting around them and a tin roof. And I, I just had to say, this is it. This is what the experts are giving us. Now, one one other thing is about the commission. Just to go back to to um, the journalist point, this commission was stood up against, um, really against the the prevailing undercurrent of the way things get done in Haiti. It was an attempt. Um, and I'm not formally part of the commission, so I'm saying as an outsider who's who's a fan, the idea was to have some way of coordinating all of these crazy actors that are people of goodwill, no doubt, but they're not coordinated in Haiti. Again, in the in the book, I compared this. Uh, con this is a, quite a contrast to Rwanda, where it's mandated. So I think uh, the, the 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 story, which I, I I'm going to look into, um, is is really. 
I'm glad that the, the, found, the Clinton Foundation would try and speed up this process uh, in, in Leogan. I'm gl I think that the ones I saw, the, hurricane, the t temporary shelters I saw, were uh, certainly not robust uh, by but any they description. They're talking about formaldehyde tainted, the company yeah. Clayton Homes, which, by the way, is owned by Berkshire Hathaway, um, uh, is they are the ones we know well from Hurricane Katrina, where all these lawsuits are happening around those, and now they're in Haiti. And I guess it's that question that you raise very well in Haiti after the earthquake through Haiti's history of who is in control, who is profiting, and who gets to make the decisions. And we'll leave it with that question. We only have about 45 seconds for you to answer. Well, I think that uh, it, it's, it's important to understand that uh, reconstruction is going to require a lot more investment in the Haitian public sector, certainly around education and uh, health care, but also in focusing on job creation for Haitians, which would, I hope, help steer resources into Haitian firms. And I know that's something, actually, that President Clinton very much would like to see himself. How does that happen when the people so often feel excluded? You got to change the the rules of the game in uh, development assistance and reconstruction. These are rules that are set in a way that automatically is a disadvantage to. Um, for example, if you just change the rule to you have to have X number of the jobs reserved for Haitians, you have to have Five X seconds. number uh, reserved for Haitian firms. That would be a good thing. That would be a change in the rules. Dr. Paul Farmer, thanks so much for being with us. His new book is called Haiti After the Earthquake. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.